3,000 years ago, tin was mined in Britain and plated onto bronze by Greek smiths to make the bright armor of Homeric heroes. But Britain itself had no tin plate industry until 300 years ago, when an English soldier brought the secret of its manufacture back from Central Europe to an ironworks on the border of Wales. 1856, with the coming of steel, came also the modern manufacture of tin plate. In dozens of factories, South Wales began to make tin plate for the world. For nearly a hundred years, tin plate has been made like this in scores of mills in Wales. Hot from the furnace, the steel bars are rolled, caught, and rolled, and caught, four passes in all, and returned to the furnace. Packed in the furnace, they come out to be rolled again, until doubles become fours and fours eights, and many thin sheets of steel are being rolled together. Skilled work, fine work, but for all its speed, slow and costly. Because after all this rolling, finishing processes are many and complicated. Five rolling mills, each with three teams of six men, must be backed up by 250 other workers, 200 men and 50 girls, to produce 336,000 sheets or 6,000 boxes of tin-plated steel a week. Since 1938, this mill at Ebu Vale has been rolling out steel for tin-plating as a continuous strip. Because the strip is continuous throughout, instead of being separate plates, the whole job can be carried out more quickly, more accurately and more cheaply and without the sweat and labor needed in the old type pack mills. Ebu Vale proved that new methods of making tin plate must in the end replace the old. During the war years, a site was chosen for a vast new works, which would complete the modernization of the South Wales tin plate industry and make it the best integrated production center in the world. In the drawing offices, plans were prepared. Here on a map of South Wales is the existing strip mill at Ebu Vale. Here around Swansea and St. Nestle are most of the old pack mills. And here are the Port Talbot and Margam iron and steel works. The plan was to modernize and extend the Margam Iron and Steelworks, raising the capacity of the blast furnaces to approximately one million tons of pig iron per year. To build alongside it on the Margam Moors a completely new hot strip mill, which will produce about one million tons per year of hot strip. About 7,000 tons of strip a week will be reduced into sheets in a new cold mill on the same site. And 7,000 tons of strip a week will be sent to a new cold mill and tin plate works to be built near St. Nestle, a few miles away. This was the first phase. Later on, the capacity of the Margam plant can be stepped up so as to feed another coal tin plate plant like the one at Trostre. But the key to it all was this, that from the sea, iron ore should come in, and at the other end of the production line, finished steel should go out. In the spring of 1947, clearance of the site for the hot strip mill began.
the new works, and with them the new integrated production of tin plate in South Wales, will not come into production until 1951. But by June 1948, this is how far the plan had progressed. At the Margam Iron and Steelworks, the harbour and ore transporter equipment were being extended to handle every hour 1,500 tonnes of iron ore. A new furnace, capable of making 5,000 tonnes of iron a week, had been built. Of two others, the first had been pulled down and was being reconstructed to a capacity of 7,500 tonnes a week. The site had been cleared for new coke ovens, which when completed will turn out an additional 1,500 tonnes of coke a day. New equipment for supplying limestone was already working. New methods of quarrying were bringing down 60,000 tonnes of limestone at a single blow. New rail tracks to deal with increased output and to form a link with a hot strip mill were well advanced. In the end, there will be a hundred miles of them. The site of the hot strip mill, the Abbey Mill as it will be called, was looking like this. This will be the mold yard. It has been pushed ahead so that it can be used as an assembly shop for the giant crane girders in the melting shop. This will be the melting shop, which at first will have eight and finally 12 200 ton steel furnaces. These will be the soaking pits, capable of handling steel ingots up to 20 tons in weight. Along here, for half a mile, the hot strip will run. This will be the cold reduction plant, with a capacity of 7,000 tons per week of steel sheet. Over at Sinesli, the site of the first of the new cold rolling mills and tin plate plants looked like this. Here, the strip from Abbey Works will be cold rolled at 50 miles an hour into 150,000 boxes of tin plate a week, equal to the output of 100 old type mills. Not till 1951 will the strip start running. But the plan is becoming reality. The sheet steel and tin plate industry of South Wales will, within the next three or four years, become the best integrated most up-to-date production centre of its kind in the world.